One question I get asked over and over again is, hey Hero, what do you recommend I do in order to make money in EVE Online? And I generally point people towards exploration, so that is exactly what I'm going to be doing today. I am Disowned Hero and welcome back to another super awesome Mega Wickle video. Yep, so a lot of people come to me, generally newer players, and say, what can I do to make money? And the first thing I tell them is, try not to do an activity just to make money. Instead, figure out what you like in the game and make money from that. It'll be so much more enjoyable. But for people who generally have no idea what they're doing or really don't know what they're going to do to make money, I'll point them towards exploration. And that's because it covers so many basic aspects of the game. It's a perfect way to get yourself into introduced to so many different things. To begin with, you'll have to get used to de-scanning, creating safes, scanning things down, so keeping yourself safe, fitting ships, actually flying, so all that kind of stuff. It's a really good way to get yourself used to how EVE works. Once you get more competence, you'll be going to low sec, null sec, wormhole space, and yeah, once you've done exploration for a while and you've figured it all out, everything becomes so much easier. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing today then. I'm going to be taking this Astero out here. I'm going to be going to Wormhole Space, which is somewhere I tell people to kind of aim towards. I will never tell a brand new player to go jump into a Wormhole, that's a bit silly. But I will say, so do exploration, get your confidence, figure out what you're doing, and then aim towards Wormholes, because that is where the money is at. The problem is, I have not actually done exploration in quite a while, so I'm going to do it today to see if anything's changed, and to also give you guys an overview of how this all all kind of works. So yeah, I'm going to be taking this Astero out here. So let's have a little run round of the fits we have. In the highs then, I have a Covert Ops Cloaking Device 2. I've got a Sisters Core Probe Launcher. I also have 16 Sisters Core Scanner Probes with me as well, and there's a good reason for that we'll go into later. I also have a T1 Relic Analyzer and a T1 Data Analyzer. We have a Warp Scram, just in case we run into someone else. These things will be hunted, especially in wormhole space. Things like to shoot data and relic kind of to exploration ships. They're easy to kill and they generally have some good loot on them. So we have one of them just in case. We have a 5MN micro drive, micro warp drive 2, just help us get out of dodge if needed and also travel around the sites a little bit quicker. In the lowest zone, we've got a damage control 2 for a little bit of uh, extra EHP up here. If we simulate that, will give you a better, better overview. In fact, all the numbers are the same. Uh, we also have a Drone Damage Amplifier 2 and also two Meta Core Equalizer two, uh, 1s. So these will just mean it's harder for things to pin us down. Having two of them means that a standard Tech 2 Scram on its own will not be able to keep us in place. Uh, also some rigs up here as well. Now the um, Astero here, I nearly forgot the name of it then. The Astero is a drone boat, it's a drone ship, that's where its damage comes from. So luckily, Joe, you can fill the highs with Covert Ops Cloak and Probe Launchers. And all your damage comes in, <coughs> excuse me, uh, comes in drones. So I've got five Hobgoblin 2s, again, just for defense, just in case. And also some ECM drones as well. Again, if something does grab us, hopefully we'll be able to get away. So yeah, the idea of this ship is not to actually kill anything, it's just to try and stay alive, uh, have a little bit of combat potential behind it, and yeah, just generally try and keep itself safe while it's doing data and relic sites. Now, to get into this ship as a brand new player, I have checked it takes 28 days. So even though it's a pirate faction ship and there's a lot of modules on here, if anyone simulates this who is brand new, it's going to come up here saying there's like 28 skills or something you need. It's actually only 28 days. And if you are brand new or thinking of playing EVE, there is a link in the description down below where you can create a character and it will give you 1 million extra skill points when you start and you can sync them into this ship and I'm pretty sure 1 million skill points will get you fully trained into this. Now the Estimate down here for Jita is 117 mil again. That could be really off-putting for any brand 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 new player. Joe, so that's gonna be an awful lot of money. But you can essentially do everything I'm gonna be doing today in a T1 variant uh, of this ship. So for the Amar, you have the Magnate. Uh, Kaldari have the Heron here. Galente have the Imicus, which is that one. And Minimitar also have the probe, 
which is there. So you could fit it pretty much the same as what I've got here. It just means you won't have the covert ops cloak, so you can't warp around cloaked. But you could just put a T1 kind of meta cloak in there, which means that once you're actually in a safe or you've warped away from the gate kind of thing, you could just turn your cloak on and scan down things without worrying about people finding you. So you don't have to be in this ship, but this is the better ship to be in, in my opinion. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to go find a wormhole. We're going to jump into it. We're going to do some data and relic things. As you can see, I'm in Jita right now. Not a good idea to jump into wormholes anywhere near Jita. There's that many people around here. The wormholes are going to be full. So find yourself a nice, quiet system and start from there. So once I've found one, I'll be right back. All right, so here we are then. We're in a nice, quiet system and uh, miles away from any kind of trade hubs or anything so hopefully not too many people jumping wormholes around here so all we need to do now is actually scan one of these bad boys down now usually i use my second screen for the scanning stuff but i've moved it over to this one so you can kind of see exactly what it is i'm doing now i have done videos on scanning wormholes and how to survive in wormholes and that kind of stuff before so if you do want to check that out I'll link it just over there somewhere, so well worth a watch if you're brand new to the wormhole stuff, but I'll try and cover a good amount of it here. Uh, so we need to open up the probe scanner to begin with and make sure we have a probe scanner loaded with the scanner core probes. So you don't want the combat probes, they won't be able to find wormholes and stuff. We also want this listed to, well, cosmic signatures, you need cosmic signatures in there because it's these things that are actually wormholes, we just need to scan them down first so yeah we'll open up the little map so we can see exactly what we're scanning uh where can i pull that i'm gonna try and rearrange things now to fit on this one uh there we go so something like that should do uh, yeah so what we need to do is launch our probes in pinpoint formation we will double click what it is we want to scan down so this one and we'll move the probes over it and simply just start scanning away. Again, I'm not going to cover everything to do with scanning. I have another video all about scanning. Again, I'll link it just there. Uh, so yeah, we'll scan this down and see if it is actually a wormhole or not. Perfect, exactly what we are looking for. Unfortunately that first system turned out to be combat site. No big deal. Just jump to the next one. Uh, you don't actually have to recall your probes anymore. I'm pretty sure they changed it. So if you jump system, not 100% if it works in wormholes, but yeah, if you jump system and don't actually recall them with this button, they will actually come back to your hold anyway. But I always like to get into the habit of manually recalling them anyway, because that one time when you're on your last set of probes, so you jump and you think, oh, I haven't pulled them back. You'll jump and be like, crap, they were left behind. So I like to pull them just in case. So there's that one scan down. We'll pull that back. Let's go and see where this leads to. Now, there is a few different types of wormholes. Generally, they all pretty much work the same. It's just they'll either lead to unknown space, which is wormhole space. Um, dangerous space, which is null, I think. And, I don't know, known space, I think, which is high sec. I actually forget, it's been that long since I've actually gone into wormholes, I actually forget what to say. So if we just close, show the info, essentially what we're looking for is an unknown space. There we go. So this wormhole leads into unknown parts of space, where so it is going to go to a wormhole kind of system. Uh, the next thing you need to look at here is this one. This wormhole is beginning to decay and probably won't last another day that's important that basically tells us how long this wormhole is going to last for this one we should have a fair enough amount of time i think what you need to look out for is anything that says so it's reaching the end of its life and it's about to collapse so that could last 10 minutes you could jump through it and it'll close right behind you we want to kind of find one that's going to be around a few hours so we can go in get our job done and come back out the way we went in as well uh, and this one as well it's not yet had its stability significantly disrupted by ships passing through it so the more ships that go through it the more it gets disrupted and at a certain point it will collapse on itself and go out so this is telling me it's had a few ships go in but 
nothing major. And yeah, larger ships can pass through this, which doesn't really bother us. We're in a stereo, we can go into anything. So what I'm going to do now is just simply hit this button up here, enter wormhole. We're going to click yes on this, just telling us there's no Concord in here. So we won't be able to, uh, to rely on them to come and save us. So the first thing you want to do when you get into wormholes is bookmark the way you came in. In case you want to right click it, save location and just put it somewhere safe. I'm just going to put it in this one, one for now. Uh, so I'm just going to call this exit. Exit 1. I had that generally just number them 1, 2, 3, 4 as I'm going. Exit 1. So if we want to leave this wormhole now, it is in our book box which is open over here. Hopefully under, ah, there it is, exit one, under there. So perfect, put that back over there. Uh, you want to have your D-scan open. Again, mine's open on a separate screen, I think. Uh, you want to D-scan as soon as you get in there, just see if there's anything about. So we hit a quick scan on that. I've got nothing on D-scan, so I'm quite happy. And we want to warp to something. So I'm going to click my get out tab here, and I want to warp to this. I'm going to warp to it. At a random distance, I'd say 70. Now, as soon as I hit warp to, I'm going to get my probes out. So, warp to, launch probes, cloak on. So, you can do this pretty quick. Obviously, it took me a little bit of time to talk through it at the same time. But yeah, you can get that process of jumping a wormhole, bookmarking it, warping, get your probes out, get your cloak on, done pretty quick. Now, wormhole space works a little bit differently to any known space. If you're unfamiliar with wormhole space, it is sometimes referred to as spooky space and J space as well, since the systems all start with J. If we look at local, you can see there is no list in local. Right now, there could be no one in this system. There could be a fleet of a hundred in this system. You have no way of knowing. Pretty much anything that comes through wormhole space has a cloak. So the only way you'd know if someone was in here with you is when they uncloak right next to you. So one thing you really need to do is pay a lot of attention to your D-scan. You need to be looking out for combat probes, scanner probes, and just ships if they somehow uncloak or you know, maybe set up a warp bubble, you know, all that kind of stuff will still appear on D-Scan, just nothing in local. Uh, I like to think it's fairly safe in these uh, wormholes, because not only do I not appear on local, or sorry, not only do they not appear on local, I don't as well. So if anyone's in here, they have no way of knowing that I'm in here. I mean, they do now because I've got my scanner probes out, but otherwise they would have no idea. You can fly through J-Space pretty easily. So yeah, all we're going to do now is start scanning these down. The first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take off the anomalies. Data and relic sites do not appear on the anomalies. They only appear under cosmic signatures. And typically, I also don't stay in the first wormhole leading to high sec. So what I'm actually looking for is another wormhole to go one deeper because, well, we're men, we like it deeper. <laughs> Ah, that was a bit of a sad joke. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we need to go away from high sec. Anyone who's just sitting here cloaked trying to catch you know, data with relic ships, probably is only going to go one, maybe two, you know, wormholes deep. They're not going to go too far. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to do now, my combat, combat probes, my scanner probes, as you can see on D-scan, are already out. So we're going to do what I did before and just start working my way through this list. So, oops, scanning all of this stuff down to see exactly what it is. Now, since I'm cloaked, I don't need to worry about D-scan too much. No one's going to be able to find me unless they actually you know, warp to me uncloaked and bump into me and take my cloak off, which is extremely unlikely, which is why I said you can do this in a T1 chip. Just make sure you have some sort of cloak so you can do this scanning part nice. Nice and carefree, basically knowing that no one's going to just appear while you're staring at this map. So yeah, I'll start scanning this down, and uh, we'll be back when we find something a little bit interesting. Alright, that's perfect. We've actually found another wormhole here, so we might be able to go deeper already. 
uh, as you can see, there's actually a few cosmic signatures in here, a wormhole that's not been touched for a while and hasn't had anyone in it running sites, so it could have 20 or 30 cosmic signatures. Since this is one jump from Hisek, it's obviously been run a few times, it's not, not too much in here. So here is the wormhole, now my bookmarks do appear on this little map where I'm scanning, so the one I bookmarked as my exit is all the way over there, so this one should lead somewhere different so this leads into dangerous unknown parts of space now one thing i haven't mentioned is there is different classes of wormhole they start at c1 being the lowest type which has like the easiest combat sites and uh, the lowest loot when it comes to drops and stuff and then you have uh, c2 c3 c4s all the way up to c6 now when you get to c4s fives and six pretty sure fours are classed as dangerous uh, you can tell that the c4 five or six by the fact that it's un uh, instead of saying just unknown parts of space, it also says dangerous unknown parts of space. Advantages, more goodies inside, slightly harder sites, NPCs and stuff, which we'll kind of be avoiding anyway in this ship, but it also means there's more likely to be people in there. People tend to live in the dangerous wormholes. So what we'll do is we'll actually jump into this one. And uh, we'll just go and have a look and see what's inside. A good way to find out, by the way, what wormhole you're in is by typing the wormhole name. So this one up here is G154538. Type that into Zkill. I'll have a link in the description down below, external website. Type it into Zkill. And uh, yeah, right at the top, it'll tell you, top left it is where the little picture of the wormhole is. It'll tell you what class wormhole it is. So let's jump through this one. There is also a way of telling what wormhole you're going into by this picture, but I've never quite figured that out. Do you like the image inside of it? This one's red. I like kind of bluey black in the middle. <laughs> don't know what that means. Someone in the comments could probably say, you know, brief overview of how you can tell by looking at this, but yeah, Z kills a good way of figuring out what class you're going into. So we'll jump into this one. We have nothing on D scan, lots of signatures, so hopefully no one's been here for a while. I actually forgot to check how old this one is. Yeah, it won't last another day, that's fine. So we're gonna do the same again. We'll save the location. And call that exit two. And submit. And this time when I go through the actions, just pay attention to the core probe launcher down here, and you'll see why I bring two sets of probes with me. So I'm gonna hit get out. I'm gonna to go to Something a bit further, let's go all the way to the other side of the system. So we want to warp to that within, say, 70, launch them, and cloak on. And you can see down here, even though I'm cloaked and I haven't actually pushed anything, it's already reloading my probe launcher. So it means less time having to reload it. It also means I can reload it while probes are out. So I don't need to call them back, decloak, load them up, cloak again, warp to where I'm going to probably decloak to. It just saves that time, and the less time you spend decloaked, the better. Let's have another scan here. I'm still showing nothing on D-scan. We're all nice and safe, cloaked up. That's all there is to it. All we need to do now is start scanning these things down and uh, see what we can find in this one. Uh, when you're going through these, by the way, again, it's always a good idea to have them listed by I. D. That way they all stay in the same order and I just simply start at the top and work my way down. If you list them by distance, signal or name, then as you're scanning them, the list will kind of get jumbled about. The distance could change and move things around. So the signal strength will obviously change, the name will change. So if you list them by ID, this list will stay in this order. So I'm just going to start at the top here then. And again, we'll just fast forward time until I find something a little bit interesting. All right, so there's actually not anything in here, to be honest. It's gas sites. If you're interested in gas, there's lots here. I don't need to scan that last one down. It's a wormhole, for sure. 
Uh, it's right on my bookmark. That's definitely going to be the way I came. So uh, we'll just call them back. And yeah, we'll just have to keep jumping. Now, what we're looking for is any data and relic site that is named. And what I mean by that is a data or relic site that's called something like um, Blood Raider, I don't know, relic sites, Grista, comms, data site, uh, Serpentis, something or other. So if it's got a faction name in front of it, they're the data relic sites we want to be doing. You do not want to be running any sites, especially in a stereo anyway, uh, any sites that have, well, no name in front of them. If it's forgotten or unsecured sites, then it's going to be full of sleepers and they will quite happily take out an Estero, no problem at all. So we're only looking for the named ones. And I do know some time ago, they did reduce how often they spawn. They used to be all over the place. You couldn't jump, say, two or three wormholes without running into like five or six of them. So I know they did nerf like the spawn rate. Uh, I don't know how much by, maybe I'm just being unlucky at the moment. So we'll just keep going and see. Well, we will eventually find one. We're going to keep going until I do find one. But yeah, we'll just see how common these things actually are. All right, so we're in a uh, wormhole here. It's C4 or below. I'm generally not too fussed when I'm doing data and relic stuff on the, the class. It doesn't really affect it too much. Um, there is a Tempest. Oh, I did see a Tempest on D-Scan. Not really too much of an issue. It does mean there's people in here, but there's no way a Tempest is going to lock up with a stair before I get out. Uh, I can imagine. There's definitely people living in here because there's a control tower here that's offline. Um... Yeah, I'm going to go for this one, see what we can find in here, playing a little bit risky. There is effects in this one, we're in class 3, it tells me there. <laughs> it's a class 3 black hole effect wormhole, which means we get 50% bonus to ship velocity, bonus to maximum target range, missile velocity, missile explosion, a 20 or 30% basically bonus or penalty to ship agility, so we go a bit slower, and stasis web fires don't work as well. So yeah, some wormholes do have effects, so just keep them in mind, especially if you're doing combat kind of things. Uh, my probes are already out, so I'm just going to start scanning them out. Alright guys, so we found something a little bit special here. We have a superior Sancha covert research site now this is a ghost site so as soon as i warp in there a timer is going to start like an invisible timer and i'll only have probably enough time to get two cans before i have to warp off because well bad things happen uh, i've just recalled my drones as you can see there is still uh, sorry my probes is still probes about to someone else is in here so i'm going to go to this one now i was going to scan everything else down first but since i know there's someone else in here I am 100% going to go in now before they get to it first. Uh, so the eyes of the nation are watching you, interfering, yada yada yada. So basically, big warning there. Has the word dangerous in it probably somewhere. It's a ghost site. Um, yeah, let's just see how we get on then. So straight away, I want to get this thing off. Quick descan doesn't show anything about. I'm going to go straight to this one. And yeah, we're going to gonna get ourselves going so is it this yeah uh not really much time to actually go through how this mini game works i do have a video on how to do this link over there uh two ah, crap one four three two damn it three three four damn it Whatever time for this. 
There it is, perfect. Give me that, what's inside? 11 mil, rubbish. Taken anyway. Now this would be a lot easier if I had a scanner with me, but I tend not to use them to be honest, because, well, don't run into these very often. So let's do one more. Then we'll probably have to be on our merry way. I'm gonna go out of range, don't go out of range, get closer. Two, one, 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 where is it there? Four, three, two, one, one. I'm gonna go for that anyway. There he is. What's in that one? 18 mil. Still absolutely rubbish. If I got time for one more. Really pushing me luck over for one more, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. That's it, I've bottled it. I'm just going to bookmark that. I will come back and I'll show you if it's uh, still there. Exactly. So what comes in, what is this? I can't search contracts here, can I? That might be worth a few bob. I'll have to check that. Alright, so if we were back there at 100, we should be able to see like the, the response, the defence that comes in. Let's go back at 100, keep ourselves cloaked. And yeah, from what I've seen of ghost sites, they come in pretty quick, they block you pretty quick, and they do a lot of damage. And I'm pretty sure someone's told me that all these kind of things here, like the bunkers and that, they all kind of explode. So it causes a lot of damage. So we'll just wait. Hopefully they appear now, so I don't feel bad for leaving all the others. If I had time to do them all, I'll feel pretty guilty. So I should have just gone for it. But like I say, it's an invisible timer. You actually you have no idea of knowing do you know when they're actually going to appear. And there they are. Yeah. So they come in pretty quick. They lock up pretty quick. Uh, no explosions though. So that's one thing. If you were fast, maybe if you were aligned out, which would be near enough impossible to do since you have to stay in range for these things. So you might be able to stay a bit longer, but yeah. Might have had time for the third, who knows. Oh, they do explode. There you go. Yeah. I don't think that'll do damage to you, though, actually thinking about it. That'll probably just stop you from being able to run them, but I'm not going to get close enough to one to find out. Uh, I am going to call it quits on the wormhole front here. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go and get a few filaments. We're going to jump to null and see if it's actually more profitable to go to null than it is wormhole space. Because yeah, we found this one, but it took a hell of a lot of time and it just wasn't worth it, to be honest. Uh, so let me get back to high sec and yeah, we'll look at going into null. All right, guys, so here we are nicely docked up. Now I'm probably going to leave null for the next video actually i'll get it out in a few days i'll take this exact ship into null and we'll see how we do there what i've learned from this is unless i've been very very unlucky you'll have to let me know in the comments down below because i haven't done it for a while joe was i just unlucky not finding any is that maybe how it always is now joe there's just none you can jump 10 wormholes and find none i went into five and found one ghost site luckily um yeah, you'd have to let me know because I honestly don't know. But what I'm going to do anyway is, yeah, I'm definitely going to take this into null sec. We'll use some filaments, try it out in null, and uh, just see if there's more money to be made there. And I'll stop telling new players to try and go into wormhole space <laughs> data and relic hunting because, well, it doesn't seem the way to go. Uh, what we did get was 10 isogen, kind of worthless. We did get 62 of these things, totaling 30 mil ish. And a quick looking contract shows that this is kind of worthless as well. Even if you build it, it's still only worth about 5 mil. So, how many is this thing build again? One probably? Yeah, one run. So, 4 mil, 5 mil if I build it. After, probably less after cost of building it. Yeah, so a pretty unsuccessful trip to be honest. That is all just going to go straight into the junk to sell. Actually, I might keep that. Just add it to my collection. There's none here, they'll get taken away to uh, special places. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I still think for a brand new player, 
data and relic hunting exploration in general is a good, good way to go. I'm looking out for other players, I'm looking out for scanner probes, trying to predict what the scanner they're looking for me, is it another you know, a stairer maybe, looking to do sites, um, seeing things on grid, how to react to them, warping safes, creating safes, bookmarks, you know, everything you need to generally fly around. You'll use this kind of stuff when you're doing combat, you'd use this kind of stuff if you're mining, you know, it's, it's just a good set of skills to have and you can get it all from doing this kind of stuff and it can be cheap as well. I mean, I'm in a stereo, again, you could go with super cheap. I believe some guys in Corp actually went to Null not long ago, needle jacked in, in probes or imicuses or something during the T1 scanning ships worth less than 2 million isk. So definitely, definitely doable. Uh, other than that guys, there's not much else to say. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did like the video, then please hit the like button down below. The subscribe button is right next to it. So give that a whack while you're there as well. And I'll see you right here very soon in another video. Bye-bye. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well to get some more game guides, how to's, let's plays and live streams from myself. I also think you should check out this video just up here, but if that one doesn't interest you, then try this one. Other than that guys, take it easy and I'll see you soon.